In this video, we're going to focus on Markovnikov's rule. So let's say we have this alkene, 2-pentene, and we react it with hydrobromic acid. What will be the products of that reaction? And let's compare it to if we have, let's say, 1-butene. If we react that with HBr, what will be the major product of that reaction? Now, for the first reaction above, we get a mixture of two different products. We're going to get 3-bromopentane and 2-bromopentane. And this is going to be 50-50. But for the reaction below, we're going to get a major product, which is 2-bromobutane. Now we could get one bromobutane, but that's going to be a minor product. So the question is, why do we get this as the major product? Well, there's something called Markovnikov's rule, which basically states that the hydrogen atom or the electrophile adds to the carbon with the most number of hydrogen atoms. And these are the carbons that are the sp2 carbons, the carbons that are part of the alkene. So this so here are the two sp2 carbons. This carbon has one hydrogen, and this carbon has two hydrogens. So based on Markovnikov's rule, the hydrogen is going to go on this carbon, the one with the most number of carbons, which means the halogen goes on the other carbon. So another way of looking at Markovnikov's rule is that the halogen, the bromine atom, is going to go on the more substituted carbon. This carbon is primary because it's attached to only one other carbon. This carbon is secondary because it's attached to two other carbon atoms. So even though Markovnikov's rules state that the electrophile, in this case hydrogen, goes on the sp2 carbon that has the greatest number of hydrogen atoms, that rule is equivalent to saying that the halogen, Br, goes on the more substituted carbon atom. And viewing it from that perspective will help you to find the answer quickly and determine if the product is Markovnikov or anti-Markovnikov. So you can say this reaction proceeds with Markovnikov addition. There are some reactions that proceed with anti-Markovnikov addition. Now the reaction on top is not regioselective, so Markovnikov's rule doesn't apply. As you can see, both of these carbons are secondary and the bromine can go on either one of those two carbons. But here there's a difference, and so this reaction is going to be regioselective. The bromine will preferentially, preferentially add to the secondary carbon. Now let's talk about the mechanism of this reaction to help us understand why the hydrogen atom goes on the primary carbon. So the first thing that happens is the alkene extracts a proton from HBr. Now, if we were to put the hydrogen on a secondary carbon, this will lead to a primary carbocation, which is not stable. But if we were to put the hydrogen on the secondary, I mean on the primary carbon, this would lead to a secondary carbocation, which is more stable than a primary carbocation. And that's the reason why the hydrogen atom goes on the less substituted carbon atom or the sp2 carbon with the most hydrogen atoms is because it leads to a more stable carbocation intermediate. Now the last step in this reaction is that bromide reacts with the carbocation giving us the product 2-bromobutane. So that's why this particular reaction proceeds with Markovnikov addition. It's due to the fact that we get a, a more stable secondary carbocation intermediate. Now consider, when, consider the following three reactions. Let's say the first one is mercury acetate with water followed by sodium borohydride. And the second one is going to be hydroboration, oxidation,
and also we'll use HBr with peroxides. And let's compare that to using just HBr by itself. So the first reaction, oxymercuration, demercuration, that reaction proceeds with Markovnikov addition. So we're going to add an OH group, and it's going to go on the more substituted secondary carbon, I mean the secondary carbon. So this is going to be the product of this reaction. Now the next reaction, hydroboration oxidation with alkenes, proceeds with anti-Markovnikov addition. So that means that the hydroxyl group is going to go on the primary carbon, or the less substituted carbon of the two carbon atoms that are double bonded. Now we know that HBr proceeds with Markovnikov addition, but HBr with peroxides proceeds with anti-Markovnikov addition. So it's important to know the regio selectivity of you know different reactions. You need to know if a certain reaction proceeds with Markovnikov addition compared to if it proceeds with anti-Markovnikov addition. Now let's consider another example. So let's say we have 3-methyl, 1-butene, and we're going to react it with some similar reagents. The first one is going to be mercury acetate in water followed by sodium borohydride. And then we're also going to use hydroboration, oxidation. And then we're also going to react it with water under acidic conditions, or equivalently, let me say that again, equivalently with H3O+. So the first reaction proceeds with Markovnikov addition, just like before. The OH group is going to go on a secondary carbon. The second reaction proceeds with anti Markovnikov addition. So the OH group is going to go on a primary carbon. Now the third reaction is a little bit different. And I want to compare the third reaction with the other starting alkene that we use in a previous example. So if you were to mix 1-butene with H3O+, this reaction will proceed with Markovnikov addition. If you were to mix H3O plus or water and H plus with this particular alkene, the answer is different. You actually get an alcohol that looks like this. The OH group doesn't go on the secondary carbon, but rather it goes on the tertiary carbon. So you need to be careful with reactions that are that proceeds with Markovnikov condition, particularly the ones that are subject to rearrangements. For the most part, the oxymercuration demercuration reaction doesn't generally proceed with rearrangements. The major product is this product. However, reactions that involve a carbocation intermediate, like the ones with HBr or H3O, these proceed with rearrangements, and as a result, the OH group goes on the most substituted carbon, that is, in the vicinity of the double bond. So now let's go over the mechanism of that reaction. Let's see why we get the tertiary alcohol. So in the first step, we can react it with H3O plus or H plus. I'm going to use H3O plus, the hydronium ion. So the alkene is going to abstract a proton. And we're going to get water. Based on Markovnikov's rule, that proton is going to go on the primary carbon the carbon with the most number of hydrogen atoms. And now we're going to get a secondary carbocation. Now tertiary carbocations are more stable than secondary carbocations. And molecules and ions, they like to rearrange themselves to find the most stable configuration. So a hydride shift will automatically occur. And this is going to give us a tertiary, more stable carbocation. Once this tertiary carbocation is formed, 
the water molecule that we got from the previous example, I mean from the previous step, or any other water molecule that is available, that's going to attack the carbocation. So once the nucleophile adds to the carbocation center or the electrophile, we're going to get this. Next, we need to use another water molecule to remove a hydrogen from this protonated alcohol species or oxonium species. And then this will give us our final answer where we have a tertiary alcohol. So that's why we get that particular product. It's due to a carbocation rearrangement. And the driving force is stability. Tertiary carbocations are more stable than secondary carbocations due to the inductive effect and hyperconjugation. So that's it for this video. Hopefully it gave you a good introduction to Markovnikov's role and how it works and how it applies in these scenarios. Thanks for watching.